Hi everyone, welcome. I am making a special edition of my donkey milk soap um, for, well, it's for all of you, but I have two people in particular who were not fans of the rose geranium. And I realize that that's not a fragrance for everyone. I'm not a fan of it either, but many people are, and that's why I make it available. But because donkey milk is one of those uh, that's in high demand, I decided to actually make this one unscented. I've had people ask for it in citrus. I've had people ask for it in lavender. I've had, well, the truth is, I don't have enough of it to make all of them. So I'm just making it unscented. It's just going to be a donkey milk soap uh, using all, of course, my regular wonderful formula of oils and butters in it so that it is non-drying, so that it cleanses you without stripping your skin and has all those wonderful benefits of that terrific lactic acid that comes from donkey milk, in addition to all those other um, wonderful uh, vitamins and minerals that are contained within it that many people really do swear by. So who am I to keep that from? <laughs> and I do understand it is hard to please everyone. Yeah, of course it is. You know why? Because then not everyone is the same. What pleases me may not please you. It's really raining outside. Matter of fact, we're under a tornado watch as not a warning right now, just a watch. A watch just means the conditions are favorable. Warning means that one has been spotted somewhere nearby. So we never want warnings. <laughs> but this is just a watch. It is the perfect weather for a thunderstorm. Uh, it's uh, between the warm air off the Gulf and a high that has come down over this part of Texas. It's just a crazy time for thunderstorms. It was so loud the other night that it awakened me. And I love sleeping through a thunder lightning storm. And I like being awake too. <laughs> so I am very partial to nasty weather to a degree. I don't want it taking down trees or hurting my animals or over flooding my land, which has happened in the past. All right, so that's the last of the lie added. And I would like to answer a question that so many people ask about lie, uh, because it seems to confuse so many people. And I understand if you have not been taught about it and you've only heard the horror stories about evil lies. So, well, you've been misinformed. All lie, all soap is lie soap. It was made from lie. Whether you're ordering a melt and pour from some company, it was made with lye. I make my own glycerin soap. That's the translucent soap. And it takes lye, just like, you know, all soap takes lye. And, ooh, the power just went off for a moment, but it came back. Let me see if I can get the lights back on. Sorry about that. I, as I said, thunderstorms. Get all the lights back on here. There we go. Um, where was I going with this? Luckily, the camera is on uh, battery, so it was able to keep going. But lie, yeah, all soap is made from lye. There's no way around it. It is sodium hydroxide, whether it's natural from there with the power again, whether it is natural from ash, Oops, sorry. Goodness. Try the lights again. There we go. <laughs> uh, sodium hydroxide comes, uh, originally came from wood ash, from burned wood. And whether by accident or on purpose, it was discovered that it turned oils 
into a whole new product. When you mix lye with oil, you get soap. It saponifies those oils and turns them into something new. It is no longer lye, and it's no longer milk in this case, but soap. So you take milk or water, whatever you're using as your liquid, and your oils that you have chosen, which we will be doing in just a moment, and when you add this lye solution to the oils after dissolving in your water or your milk, like I'm doing here, and then when you add it to your oils, it starts turning those oils into soap. Yeah, and the lye is no longer there. Now, if you've heard horror stories about people being burned by lye soap, well, again, all soap is lye, but miscalculations, especially back in, well, my grandmother's day, she couldn't buy sodium hydroxide where she lived. She had to make her own from wood ash. And it was a pretty inexact science. They would do things like float an egg, or there's some other things they would try to do to tell when the lye was ready to use. But then again, getting just the right measurement could be very tricky. And soap is one of those things that you do want to be as exact as you can with. And so if you're unable to do that using something like wood ash, you can see how maybe sometimes soap ended up very lie heavy. My mother told me when she was growing up that her mother oftentimes uh, bathed them with some pretty lie heavy soap. So that's why from a young age, she started learning more about soap making and how to make it more gentle. And then when she got me and realized that I was a baby with very super, super sensitive skin, that she had to teach me the same so that when I grew up, I'd be able to take care of myself. And now I don't have children, so I get to pass that on to you all. And I love being able to do that. All right, so now I'm going to be adding in our lye mixture into our oils. I'm just going to gently stir this in to begin. And people have had a few questions about this. Why don't you just put the stick blender in there and just mix it as you pour? I can do that and do do that sometimes. If you've watched enough of my videos, you'll know that I do that sometimes. I, and this is probably all in my head, and I'm willing to admit that, with what I consider rare or golden special re uh, ingredients, like in this case, donkey milk, I really do treat it with the utmost respect that I can um, and treat it gently as I can. You know, that, that only goes so far, obviously. It's inanimate. Obviously, it doesn't know how I'm treating it. Uh, <laughs> but I just tend to take my time a little more uh, with special ingredients. Even when dealing with my own goat's milk, I like to think that I treat them well and respectfully, if that makes sense. And it probably doesn't. It's probably just me being goofy, Patrick. All right. All right. So I'm going to turn on the stick blender now. Here we go. Right, let's do a little scraping down here and see if we can get all the goodness out of the bucket. I've got my mold super full and it's not overflowing yet. So this is my way of making sure that happens. No, I'm kidding, but I do want to make sure I get all of this wonderful soap out of the, out of the bucket. 
it's too precious to me to just let it go to waste. And see, there's still a little bit there. Boy, and that was just a perfect amount. So I got a multi-wire cutter as a gift for myself this year for my birthday. <laughs> it's first opportunity I've had to use it and share it with you all. Um, this is the worst kind of soap to probably demonstrate it on because it's not a pattern soap. It's just a plain soap. But that's kind of me. So here we go. It's quite a hard soap. That's good though. I had this soap maker a soap, soap maker i had this soap cutter made to a specific calibration for one and a quarter inch size um and i think i banged the top on that one a little bit but it'll all clean up but these are not going to be very interesting of course because well there's no pattern in them. They're all just good old goodness, donkey milk soap. They smell very fresh. So I hope you all have a beautiful day. Thank you so much for, as always, for being here, for being a part of Soapy Oaks Farm. I appreciate you more than I can possibly let you know. Please have a beautiful day, everyone. And I'll see you back soon. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs>